Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're going to practice graphing quadratic functions. If you're looking for some help on graphing quadratic functions written in standard form, check out one of my previous videos. In this particular video, we're going to practice graphing quadratic functions when they're written in vertex form. Just a reminder, the vertex form of a quadratic function is f of x is equal to a times the quantity of x minus h squared plus k. Our value a here will let us know if the vertex is at the minimum or maximum and if the parabola opens up or opens down, and also lets us know if we have a vertical stretch or vertical shrink. If a is positive, we're going to have a minimum and the parabola opens up, and if a is negative, we're going to have a maximum and the parabola will open down. And if the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then we're going to have a vertical stretch or the parabola gets skinnier, and if the absolute value of a is less than 1, then we're going to have a vertical shrink or it gets a little wider. The variable h lets us know what sort of horizontal translations we have, and if h is positive, then the vertex is going to be moved to the right, and if h is negative, then the vertex is going to be moved to the left. Remember, h also lets us know where the axis of symmetry, or AOS, is located. And that brings us to the variable k. k lets us know what sort of vertical translations we have. If k is positive, then the vertex is going to be moving up k units, and if k is negative, then the vertex is moved down k units. While well, h lets us know what the x-coordinate is for the vertex, k lets us know what the y-coordinate is for the vertex. In each of these examples, we're going to complete all the steps necessary to create a parabola that represents each of the functions that we're given. Real quick, I just wanted to remind you that this channel is a nonprofit and that when you help support this channel, you're helping support other students get an education. If you want to help out this channel, you can do so by giving the video a thumbs up, leaving a comment in the section down below, and also consider subscribing. Now that we're going to try some examples together, I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In example one, we have the quadratic function f of x is equal to the quantity of x minus three squared. And just to be super clear and show you how this is in vertex form, let me rewrite this using our a, h, and k colors. Hopefully by rewriting it like this, it's super clear what our variables are. So we know a is equal to 1, and then we know that our h is going to equal 3, and finally we know that our k value is going to equal 0. Now because we know that a is equal to 1, that's a positive value, so we have a minimum. And so we know the parabola opens up. And because we know that h is equal to positive 3 and k is equal to 0, we know that our vertex is going to be located at 3 comma 0. And in addition, because we know what our h value is, we also know our axis of symmetry. The equation is going to be x equals 3. That's our vertical line. What's nice about vertex form is because we already know the vertex from looking at the equation, we can just go ahead and make a table and write our vertex in the center of it. Because parabolas are going to be symmetrical, we can put the vertex right in the middle, and that's going to be 3 for x and 0 for f of x or y. And now we're going to pick some numbers that are going to be a little smaller and a little bigger than 3, but equidistant on both sides. Below 3, I'm going to choose the number 1, which is two numbers below 3. So to match that on the other side of the 3, I'll go two numbers above. And then I'll go one number below the 1, which is a 0, because that's a nice easy number to use. So I'll go one number higher, like 6. So that's going to match. Well, you could have just chosen numbers right next to 3. I like to choose numbers like 0 and 1 because they're easier to use when plugging them into the function. When x is 1 and 5, we're going to get the same f of x value or y value, so we just have to choose one of them. For this function, since we have to do x minus 3, I'm going to use the 5 so we stay with positive numbers. Let's go back to using the original function, but we're finding f of x and x is going to be 5, so let's make this substitution. Substituting 5 in for x, we can now follow the order of operations, and following 5 minus 3, that's going to equal 2. So we have 2 squared, and that's just going to equal 4. So we know that when x is equal to 5, then f of x is equal to 4, and so that when x is equal to 1, f of 1 will also equal 4. They have to be symmetrical. Now we need to choose between using x equals 0 and x equals 6. And while generally I like using 0, in this problem I'm going to use the 6 again just because we're subtracting 3 and we can stay in the positives. Substituting in 6 for x, we're going to have... Following the order of operations, we're going to do the 6 minus 3 first, and that's equal to 3, so we'll have 3 squared. 3 squared is just going to equal 9, so we know that when x is equal to 6, f of x or the y value will equal 9, 
So we can go ahead and plug that in over here in the table, and that's gonna match down here when x is equal to zero. At this point, we have a completed table with five ordered pairs, so let's go ahead and sketch a graph on a coordinate plane. So here's our coordinate plane, and we know that our vertex is three comma zero, which is located on the positive x-axis, so I'm gonna plot that right over here. And while it's not completely necessary, since we know that h is equal to three, and that's the AOS, I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch that vertical line so we can see where the parabola is going to be centered. One comma four is gonna be located in quadrant one, right about here. And the five comma four is gonna be equidistant on the other side, which is also gonna be in quadrant one. And finally, zero comma nine is gonna be along the y-axis. That also happens to be our y-intercept. That's three away from the AOS, so we have to go three away on the right side as well. That's gonna be six comma nine. Now that we've plotted our five points, we can draw a smooth curve through all of these points, which represents our parabola. Here's a second example. In example two, we have f of x is equal to negative four times the quantity of x minus two squared plus five. If you'd like to pause the video and try it on your own, go ahead and do so. Otherwise, we can just do it together. And just like in example one, I'm gonna rewrite this so that you can help identify what our h, a, and k values are. Hopefully it's a little bit more clear that our value of a is equal to negative four, and the value of h is gonna equal a positive two, and the value of k is gonna be a positive five. Because a is equal to negative four, we know that this parabola is gonna have a maximum because it's flipped upside down due to the negative, so the parabola opens downwards. And on top of that, since the absolute value of negative four is positive four, and that's greater than one, we know that there's going to be a vertical stretch, so the parabola is gonna be a little skinnier than usual. Knowing that h is equal to 2 and k is equal to 5, we know that our vertex is going to be located at 2 comma 5 over in quadrant 1. And since our vertex is always located on the axis of symmetry, we can also go ahead and say that we have a vertical line of x equals 2 for our axis of symmetry. Since we already know the AOS or the center of our table or parabola, let's go ahead and start the table. As usual, we'll take the vertex or the middle of the parabola and put it right in the center of the table. And then we can go ahead and choose some values that are smaller than two, like one and zero. Those are pretty easy numbers to use. One is one lower than two, so we have to go one higher than two here. Zero is two lower than two, and so we have to go two higher, which is going to be four. Choosing between one and three, in this problem, I'm gonna try using the one. Let's go ahead and substitute that value for one into this function, and then go ahead and solve for y, or f of x. So now that we've substituted in one for x, let's go ahead and solve for y. So first we're gonna start with the parentheses here. So that's gonna be negative four times, well one minus two, that's negative one. So we'll have negative one squared plus this five. Then we're gonna to have to square this negative one because exponents come next. Negative one times negative one is going to be positive one. So we'll have negative four times this positive one, then plus this five. Then multiplication comes next. So four times negative one, that's going to be negative four. We have negative four plus five. And now that's only one final step to do. And negative four plus five is equal to positive one. So we just find out that when x is equal to one, f of x or y is also equal to one. And so that's gonna match for the three as well. Now let's go ahead and try this again, but we'll do it for when x is equal to zero or four. And while you can totally choose whichever one you prefer to do, I'm gonna try using the zero here. Plugging in zero for x, we're gonna have and following the order of operations, we're just gonna start with the parentheses. Zero minus two is negative two, so we'll have negative four times this negative two squared plus five. Then comes exponents, so negative two squared is going to be positive four. So we'll have negative four times a positive four plus this five. After that, we'll have negative four times positive four, which is negative 16, so we'll have negative 16 plus five. And negative 16 plus five, that's really just 16 minus five, which is 11, but it has to stay negative. So when x is zero, we find out that our y value, or f of x, is equal to negative 11, and that happened to be the same when x is equal to four, so we can go ahead and plug that in as well. Now that we have a completed table, let's go ahead and sketch the graph. Here's our coordinate plane. 
And taking our vertex, which is 2 comma 5, we can plot that over in quadrant 1, which will be located right here. Our AOS is this vertical line of x equals 2, or our h valley, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that as well. Plotting the point we have 1 comma 1, that's going to be located to the left of that AOS, and so for that point 3 comma 1, that's going to be 1 to the right of the AOS. And for the other two points of 0 comma negative 11 and 4 comma negative 11, that's not going to quite fit on this graph, but I think you'll get the point of where those will be located. Let me go ahead and sketch the parabola, and you can see where those points are as well. Here's the sketch of our parabola going through the three points that we plotted, and hopefully you can see that 0, negative 11 and 4, negative 11 would be connecting with this parabola as well, right below where my edge is cut off. Hopefully it makes sense visually that because a was equal to negative 4, that we do have a maximum and the parabola opens down, and that we also have a vertical stretch where the parabola is a little skinnier because a was equal to negative 4. So multiplying something by 4 will make it change vertically a little bit faster, which makes it a little bit skinnier. Here's a third and final example for this video. We have f of x is equal to 1 half times the quantity of x plus 3 squared minus 2. If you think you're getting the gist of it, go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. Otherwise, we can try it together. Let me go ahead and rewrite this to help you identify our a, h, and k values one more time. So notice how I wrote this out to hopefully make it a little bit more clear. So a is equal to 1 half, that's not very confusing, that's pretty standard. However, inside the parentheses, for vertex form, it's supposed to say x minus h. So when we see this plus sign, that really means that we're subtracting a negative, so the value of h is equal to negative 3. And typically it says plus k at the end, so when we have this minus 2, remember that we could rewrite that as plus a negative 2, or adding the opposite, so we know our k value is equal to this negative 2. From knowing that a is equal to 1 half, we know that there's going to be a minimum because a is positive, and that the parabola opens upwards. And since the absolute value of a is equal to 1 half, which is a proper fraction, if you multiply something by 1 half, it's going to get smaller. We know that there's going to be a vertical shrink, or the parabola is going to be wider than normal. We know h equals negative 3 and k equals negative 2. So our vertex is going to be located in quadrant 3 at negative 3 comma negative 2. And in addition, we know that our AOS, or axis of symmetry, is located at x equals negative 3. That's going to be our vertical line. Let's go ahead and take our vertex and start our table now. In the center, we can put our AOS of negative 3, and our y value for the vertex is going to be negative 2. So we can go 1 higher than negative 3 for negative 2, so we'll go 1 smaller, which is negative 4. And then we could jump 2 higher, maybe to get to 0, that's a nice easy number to use. And we'll jump 2 smaller to get to negative 6. Now let's try to fill in the rest of this table. Between negative 4 and negative 2, I'm going to choose to use negative 2 because we're going to have to add 3 to it and that'll bring us into the positives. Substituting in negative 2 in for x, we're going to have just going ahead and using the order of operations on this right side, parentheses is first, so negative 2 plus 3 will equal positive 1, so we'll have 1 half times this positive 1 squared minus 2. Then we'll go ahead and take this 1 and square it, and that's going to remain as a 1. So we have 1 half times this 1 again, and we'll take away 2. Then multiplication is going to be more important than subtraction. So 1 half times 1, that's equal to 1 half, and take away 2. And if we don't know 1 half minus 2, just go ahead and do 2 minus 1 half, which is 1 and a half, and it's going to be negative. So we'll go ahead and subtract this 1 half minus 2, and that's going to be negative 1 and 1 half. So we just found out that when x is equal to negative 2, our y value was equal to negative 1 and 1 half, so we can go ahead and plug that into our table. So just a little bit more to go. When choosing between negative 6 and 0, I'm going to go ahead and use the 0, and substituting in for that x here and that x here, we can go ahead and write Evaluating this expression, we can go ahead and follow the order of operations. 0 plus 3 is going to be 3, so we have 1 half times this 3 squared minus 2. Exponent's going to come next, so 3 squared is 3 times 3, that's equal to 9. So we'll have 1 half times this 9, and then take away 2. 1 half times 9, that's just equal to 4 and a half, because it's just half of 9. So we can go ahead and write 4 and a half. 
subtract two, and four and a half take away two is going to be two and one half. So when x is equal to zero, we know y is equal to two and one half, so we can go ahead and write that in our table, that's f of x. And over here as well, we're gonna go ahead and write two and one half. So here we have a completed table. Now let's go ahead and sketch our parabola. There is our coordinate plane, and we can go ahead and start by plotting our vertex. Our vertex should be located in quadrant three since we have a negative x and a negative y value, so that's gonna be located right down here. And of course, our axis of symmetry is gonna run through that and it's gonna be this vertical line at x equals negative three. Plotting the point negative four comma negative one and one half, that's gonna be located to the left of the AOS. And for the negative two comma negative one and a half, that's gonna be located to the right of it, right about here. For zero comma two and a half, that's going to be located to the right, but that one's a little bit easier to plot since it's along the Y axis. That looks like it's three boxes away uh, from the AOS. So I'm gonna go ahead and go three boxes to the left and that should be where the negative six comma positive two and a half is located. Sketching a smooth curve through these five points, here's our parabola. Hopefully you can see that this parabola is gonna be a little bit wider than usual. And that's due to the fact that a was equal to one half, which caused a vertical shrink. So when you multiply anything by one half, it gets a little smaller, so it's not gonna travel up as fast. And also because a was a positive value, this particular quadratic function had a minimum. And when that happens, the parabola opens upwards. And there you have three different examples of graphing quadratic functions when they're written in vertex form. If you found this video helpful, you can let me know in the comment section down below, and you can also help out this channel by giving the video a thumbs up. As always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.